Hey guys, this is Pete Brizio. I'm Doug Mutt. And welcome back to another video from AquaFX. Today we're going to be lightly speaking about our reverse osmosis booster pump and some new additions that we've made to the pump that should make your day-to-day -day reefing a lot easier. Here we are with our brand new Barracuda Glacial. We went ahead and installed the membrane already. We're going to go ahead and plumb it up with the cold water line and get this guy going. We're not going to want to use hot water ever because we could damage our membrane and possibly our canisters also. We're going to go ahead and turn on our cold water line and see what happens. So initially we're going to go ahead and measure the TDS out of the RO membrane. Uh, higher pressures should yield uh, higher rejection ratios as well as slightly more production. So we're going to go ahead and measure all that. So we've just turned on our Barracuda Glacial system and we're going to check our initial pressure and TDS values and see if they correspond with our 90% minimum rejection that we're looking for from our RO membrane. So I've got one TDS probe hooked up before the system and I've got one TDS probe hooked up after the RO membrane but before the DI filter. So turning on my TDS probe, I can see I've got about 121 or 122 parts per million incoming and switching to my out, I see I'm at 16 parts per million, which is acceptable and is actually pretty good. It's more than 90%. However, when we introduce more line feed pressure, we're going to get a lower value, which will translate into longer lasting DI resin. Just a side note, we do have two different models. One's our high flow and one's our standard. The high flow is typically used for anything above 100 gallon per day, like 200 and 300 gallon per days. And this is our standard pump and that's gonna go for the 50 to 100 gallon per days. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our pump and our fitting and get everything started. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull these fittings out. We got elbows. Gonna go ahead and thread this guy in. So now that we got our fittings added in there, there is directional flows through this pump. You do wanna go in the in and out the out. So now that Doug's installed the fittings onto the RO booster pump, we're going to go ahead and talk about the ideal place to install the booster pump. Ideally, we're going to install our RO booster pump post pre-filters, meaning that any sort of sediment or chlorine that's in your tap water would never actually reach the pump itself, meaning longer pump life. Um, for our setup here and for a lot of setups at home, it may be impractical. So for demonstration purposes, we're actually going to be installing the RO booster pump before the entire system today. However, if you have a uh, panel board in your garage or something that you can mount the pump to in order to allow the pre-treated water to pass through the pump, that would highly be our recommendation. Again, just for the longevity of the uh, RO booster pump. Here's my Barracuda. It's running. We got the feed line going into it. You can see here we're really low PSI, not to the recommendation. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the feed water line off. I'm going to open this flush kit and relieve some of that pressure. Give it a second to let the water that's built up in there kind of exit the system so no explosions happen as far as the water goes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cut the tube. Woo. Take your cold water line, go ahead and plumb it right into the in arrow on the pump head, just like so. And then take your extra piece of tubing, go ahead and plumb it from the pump into the system. So I just got my pump installed. We're gonna go ahead and install the check valve and the high pressure switch. Um, ideally, we're gonna wanna go anywhere after the RO membrane. Uh, for our purpose, we're gonna go after the DI because there's a lot of stuff going on on the bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tubing put the check valve in. Make sure you get the arrow going towards the float. All right, go ahead and get another little piece of tubing and then insert the high pressure switch. This is a universal direction. It doesn't have a float in or out, so you can go either way. And then you just connect the tubing and then it goes on to the float. You should be good to fire our system back up. Now that Doug's done all the heavy lifting, we're gonna go ahead and take a look to see where we're at. We've got our Barracuda glacial system installed. We've got our booster pump installed before the pre-filters, of course, taking note of the directional arrows on the booster pump. 
we've got our check valve. Again, anywhere after the RO membrane on the exit of the system is totally fine. Uh, check valve and then unidirectional high pressure switch that is going to tell the pump to shut off when your line is full. Uh, uh, this will sense the back pressure in the line if you're using a float valve or a ball valve or anything to shut off your product water, uh, thus automating the pump. I've now got my booster pump on and running on our Barracuda RODI glacial system. And the first thing that catches my attention is the fact that we're over 80 PSI. Uh, 80 PSI is the absolute maximum that we recommend to run these systems at. Uh, it's gonna give you efficiency that's well within reason and you're not going to stress out the physical components of the system. So, first thing I wanna do is grab a six millimeter Allen head wrench. And I'll notice that on the head of the booster pump, there is a slot for the Allen head wrench. I can go ahead and insert this and I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise while looking at the pressure gauge. Once I've achieved a pressure that's lower than 80 PSI, I'm comfortable with leaving my RO system there to make water and to leave at that pressure. Now that we've got the system up and running, we can go ahead and measure the TDS value out of our RO membrane. Immediately, we see a very low value of six parts per million. Comparatively to our 12 parts per million we were seeing earlier, that means that your DI life is not gonna last twice as long simply from the introduction of the booster pump. So to simulate a float valve downstream, we've got a ball valve on our product water out of our DI filter. We're gonna go ahead and shut this ball valve off, which would be the same thing happening if your float valve had reached its level inside the container. Here about 10 seconds later, I'm still running, but within about 15, 20 seconds, this pump is gonna shut off and stop until the pressure is relieved on the product side. See? <laughs> Told you. Imagine. <laughs> so I've gone ahead and I've got my booster pump installed. That about concludes everything that we're gonna do today. Of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give our senior tech Doug a call or myself. Uh, we're always at the shop and we should be available to you just about any time that you're looking for us. Thanks again, I'm Pete Brizio. I'm Doug Mutt and I look forward to speaking to you in the future.